Welcome to the first full week of Thor Ewing, meaning it is our first theme week in which every single movie that we review this week will be following a theme. This is kind of an interesting theme because it originally started off as multiple other themes, <laughs> but then like after we had already watched several movies for other themes that we were going to do for this week, I kind of looked at them and went, oh wait, they all kind of fall into yet another theme. <laughs> and that theme is way better than the one we were going to do. Originally, the theme for this week was going to be Nostalgia Week. It was going to be movies that I have seen, and I am now going back and re-watching them, and I'm kind of going to just go, does it hold up? Is it as good as I remember Yeah, and being? it's like, it's mostly you going back, because I didn't watch horror movies as a kid. Like, my parents wouldn't let me. They always told me, like, it would give me nightmares and stuff, so... So it'll be basically two... <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just thinking about like how now every single year you have like a month-long celebration of horror. <laughs> <laughs> wow, did that plan backfire? Uh, well, uh, they're not giving me nightmares, so... <laughs> so suck on that, Mom and Dad. <laughs> uh, um, so, as I was saying, uh, yeah, it was going to be kind of like two different perspectives. Me going, okay, does this still hold up? And you saying your opinions aren't seen it the first time around. But the more I started thinking about that, the more I was like, I don't know if that's the best theme, because then if you look at all the movies just kind of as they are, without realizing what the theme is, you'll have no idea what the theme is, because it's a very personal theme. But then I looked at the films that we had already watched, and it slowly dawned on me, oh my god, these all fit into yet another theme, and that theme is going to be the B-Squad. When you think about famous horror movie villains, you think of Freddy, you think of Jason, you think of Michael Myers, uh, but you don't really think of the tall mans, the pumpkin heads, the maniac cops. All these guys had franchises, they had multiple installments, and there are the horror movie fans out there who will stand by them and say these movies are great, they are wonderful, they deserve to stand up there with those other films. But you gotta be real, man. They never broke into that level yeah. of fame and stardom they, that the big guys did. They didn't go mainstream. They're they like did. more of like a cult classic. They are cult classics. They are the guys that, like I said, the big horror buffs will hold on to them. But you go up to the average movie fan out there and goes like, yeah, so what did you think about Phantasm? What? <laughs> They're not gonna know what you're talking about. Uh... So yeah, that is the movie that we are reviewing today, it is Phantasm, and let me just go ahead and say, in order to count for this week's theme of the B-Squad, the also Rans, uh, the failed franchises, whatever you want to call it, in order to count for that, you have to have a character in there that is, like, supposed to be your face, that guy who you were trying to sell as the main character of this franchise, you know, like I said, you're Freddy, you're Jason, what have you, but also it has to have had multiple installments. So it can't just be a, we put out one thing and then it absolutely tanked. It has to be that thing that's like, no one held in there. It stuck around. It gave it the old college try, but yeah, it just, it, it couldn't do it. Uh, so yeah, we are starting with Phantasm. And like we mentioned, this does have that audience. That does have that audience that loves the Phantasm series. And I gotta admit, I saw Phantasm a long time ago and I remember really digging the heck out of this thing. Did I mention the original theme for this week was going to be, does it still hold up? <laughs> and me looking back at these films and going, yeah, is it as good as I remember it? Uh, this is not. <laughs> oh my god. You actually turned to me at one point and said, so you say this movie's good. Is it one of those films that's so bad it's good? I went, no. No. <laughs> it's not one of those films. Oh, but it is so bad. Uh, now I should point out, we watched the remastered edition of this, so I don't know if scenes were missing for the remaster version, which would be weird. Normally you think for a remaster version they would maybe even include additional scenes or something. But this film, it struggles from just having this feeling like there is so much that was left on the cutting room floor. And I will say this, if you are going to watch one version of this, watch the remaster version, because they did a hell of a remaster on this. This looks crisp. This looks like it was actually shot with a modern day camera. I don't know how they up this thing so well, but they did. So on a technological level, the remaster is fairly impressive. 
That's probably the biggest compliment <laughs> I'm going to give this movie. Phantasm is a movie about this kid who has a brother, but the brother typically stays out of town, but he's come into town because a friend of his has died, and the little kid is, which I say little kid, he's like 13, 14, 15 or something. Yeah. He's scoping out the funeral parlor, and he notices that the big tall guy who runs it is lifting up a casket all by himself. So he's like, well, that's not normal. And he starts investigating it, and he finds like little people in robes <laughs> running around. Uh, which there's an explanation for the little people in robes, and we're gonna we're gonna spoil this one. <laughs> I'll go beat by beat. So for anybody out there who's like, well, I'm interested in seeing this, I'll give you your chance to like go. Okay, he's talking too much now. I will go out and watch this film for myself, but. We do have to eventually get into some of these things. Yeah, and like, if any of the things we say do interest you, it's like, that sounds so weird, I gotta see it for myself. Honestly, <laughs> that is one of the big appeals of this film now. Like I said, I originally liked this film because it did have some creepy things in there. Uh, I remember years ago, years ago, uh, some guy on a website did top 100 scariest horror movie scenes, and then Bravo came in here and did that as a TV series and totally ripped him off and did not pay him <laughs> anything for it because the idea of top 100 scariest movie scenes, nobody owns the rights to that. And that's not like something that you can copyright. But they clearly used a lot of examples from his list and they were examples that nobody would just happen to repeat. Like the Willy Wonka scene of them on the boat ride, mm -hmm. that was on this guy's list and it was on the Bravo list. And like, that's not a horror movie. So it's weird that you would both have that on there. So it feels like this is more than a coincidence. Uh, anyway, I bring this up because that was the thing that kind of introduced this film to, I think, my generation. Because remember, I was a horror fan. You remember that special. You remember them talking about that. And there is a scene from this movie on both uh, of those lists. And I will say, to this day, even with the problems I'm going to go into in this film... I think it's a legitimately good, scary scene. Uh, do you want to take a guess of what the scene is? Oh, is it the scene where the kid wakes up in the bed yes. and it's in the graveyard? Absolutely, yes, that is what it is. Uh, like, that is, like, a very iconic scene, like... Oh, so even, you didn't even worry of that, okay. I, I, it's like, I, like, even if you don't know, like, the reference, I feel like... Like, it you, just feels like something that people would show a lot. Yeah, exactly. It feels like something that people would reference, yes. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, it like that is the one scene in this entire film that is just like, did you guys get like an actual A-class director to come in here for one day? <laughs> It's like, all right, you got five minutes, make it count. Yeah, we can't afford you for to uh, do everything, so. We gotta get the guy who was running the ice cream truck in this movie <laughs> to make the rest of this film. By the way, oh my god, we were watching this on Amazon Prime, and on Amazon they've got this really cool little feature where you can just pause the film and it pops up and shows you every actor that's in the particular scene that you're looking at right now. Which for someone like me, who constantly goes, oh my god, who is that guy? Who is that guy? I know him from things. What do I know him from? Oh my god, what is he in? If you're like me, this is amazing. But it basically gives each of their IMDb descriptions in there as well. We went over to the guy who plays the friend of the brother who runs an ice cream truck. And we read his description. It had to have been written by either himself or his publicist. It had to have been written by him or his agent. That's it. Because it is just such this amazing, this amazing cult film legend <laughs> who played the heroic ice cream man of the phantasms. They're like, you got to get the fuck out, man. Like, we all see what you're doing on this. Um, but anyway, yeah, I will say that was a legitimately good shot. And that's what actually got me interested in the film when I was much younger and I heard about this the first time. And I checked it out and, yeah, I did walk away enjoying this thing. Uh, I think that the tall man is a very creepy character. I don't remember anything else I liked about this, but that shot was good. That shot was good. Uh, there's a couple of other shots in here that are decent. Uh, but, yeah, I did not recognize the massive flaws in this film until watching it this time. And there are flaws that I can't understand anybody not recognizing. And if you recognize it and you say you still like it, even because of those flaws, more power to you. 
Absolutely, because it almost does. This film almost reminds me of like a terrible script that I would have written back in high school. Because <laughs> every now and then I think about like the kind of like movie scripts that I used to write in high school. I'm like, oh my god, I remember how I would just not set stuff up and then I would just have random characters appear and just like I would just leave it up the eyes, figure out why they were there and something. Yeah, it's like there's quite a few times where like they would introduce a character and just like, oh, this seems like an important character and they're probably gonna come back around and for something important later on and they never do. No, there is always, I don't know if there is a term for this, but there should be a term for this. It's whenever you're like, we're in a scene and we have to think of what to do with this, introduce new character and take care of that. It's not Deus Ex Machina, no, but I mean, it is like, okay, we have to go and investigate the graveyard, but we can't take you along with us. Who can we give him to? Oh, let's give him to Sharon. Who the fuck is Sharon? She doesn't be- who? It's like, hi, I'm here to move the story along. Yes, like, hey, that's exactly bye. what it is. <laughs> that is exactly what it is. And that happens so many times in here. This movie begins with the kid going to a fortune teller. And the fortune teller never comes up again. Really, the fortune teller is only there to say, fear is the enemy. You must not be afraid. That is the lesson she's trying to teach you. Do not be afraid. And then there's a moment way later on where he has to kind of take a leap of faith and goes, don't be afraid. This is what she was talking about. I was like, you needed that to be set up? You needed no fear to be set up? You could have just shown on a shirt somewhere. Uh, it's so bizarre to me that that's how they start this thing. And you kept looking at this character going, that's clearly a character. Clearly they're going to come back around. And also, she's even got magic powers. That has to, in some way, tie back around to the big, weird demon man who's running things. Nope! Never comes back around. At all! Uh, and man, is it starts out so frustrating with that, and just continues. Like I said, there is a moment later on in this film where the brother and the ice cream truck guy have to go and scope out this funeral home and they gotta figure out who's gotta take care of the younger brother. So here come two female characters that we have never seen into the movie before. But the weirdest one to me, you know what I'm about to say. <laughs> the weirdest one to me, I kept having this question throughout the entire film. They mentioned that their parents are dead. But they also mentioned that the brother is like a drifter just moving around town, just going from place to place. And all I could think was, okay, parents are dead, older brother's not there. Who's taking care of the 13-year-old younger brother? Is he just living in the house by himself? Where's he got money for food? How is, is he even going to school? What, who's taking care of the little kid? And there is one moment, like, I don't know, like maybe an hour into this 90-minute long film, where they are coming home, it is the little brother, the older brother, and the ice cream truck guy, and they're coming home, and then the ice cream truck guy passes by a door in their house and this old black lady just opens up the door and just goes, you boys making a ruckus out there. And he's like, no, 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 we're, we're, we're okay, lady, we're, we're okay. And he goes, okay, and then she closes the door and I'm just like, who the fuck was that? <laughs> we're an hour into this film and you've just got some old lady just living in your house? What? She's the one who's supposed to take care of the kid, I'm guessing. I'm guessing. That's the, the, the thing. optimal it's... word here. <laughs> like, what the fuck? What? And she's never mentioned again? I don't even think they gave her a name. She's like, who? Who is that? Like, I think she was, like, credited as, like, maid in the credits or something. What? Like, I, I don't know for sure. But... How do they have a money for a maid? There's no parents. No one has a job in this house. <laughs> How loaded were the parents and how would all of it go to the 13 year old? <laughs> I don't, what? I don't. Oh my god. This is just fucking madness. Although this was during the 70s, so there was a lot of weird shit that they did back then, so who knows? I'm pretty sure that the laws about when you can inherit your parents' fortune <laughs> still applied. I'm pretty sure that you still are not allowed to be an unaccompanied minor just living on your own at 13. Uh,. Yeah, I don't, I've, I don't even know how any of that shit is explained. And, like, the frustrating thing is whenever they ask for, like, whenever they do explain something, it's always like, oh, this happened oh, off screen. Oh, I know screen. exactly what you're talking about. This, all this 
happened off screen. It's no big deal, even though it is pretty fucking important, but yeah. <laughs> yeah, okay, let's go ahead and get into that. There was a moment in which uh, the kid is being driven back home by the two women who we have never seen in this film, but they're now taking care of him for some reason. They see an overturned ice cream truck. They get out there. It looks like the ice cream truck guy's gone. I think his name was Reggie. Reggie. Yes. That was it, yes. It was either Reggie or Ronnie. I couldn't remember, but I think it's Reggie. Uh, we're going to call him Reggie. Selling on Reggie. Uh, but the kid gets out and investigates, and then the, like, two little people attack, two of the, like, roamed hooded little people attack the ladies in the car, they drive off, and then later in the film, out of nowhere, Reggie is just okay, and then they go to the funeral home with Reggie, and then Reggie just disappears for a while, and then he returns and he goes, yeah, I found, insert those two girls' names who were taking care of the kid in that one scene. I found them, and I got them free, along with a bunch of other people that I found. That would have been neat to see. <laughs> okay. First off, we didn't even know those ladies existed until the scene where you needed them to exist for this <laughs> plot to move. None of us have any attachments to them. If they disappeared, it's fine. Like, nobody was sitting there in that theater going, but what about Lady 1 and Lady 2? What about them? No one was saying that because there's nothing important about them. They have no character at all in this movie. They, have, they literally only exist to be an excuse to get rid of the kid for five seconds. <laughs> uh... And it's just so weird to me that, like, someone was sitting there going, we have to explain what happened to them, but we could only get them for one day. How are we going to do that? Reggie. Reggie saved them and a bunch of other people off screen. And this just makes me think that Reggie had to have had something to do with the making of this film. Like, he had to have been, like, one of the writers on here or a director or something. Because he returned in all, like, apparently there's four or five other Phantasm films, and he's in all of them. Uh... He is the Ash Williams of this franchise. <laughs> and and it is just so oh my god. Like here's like It's just so weird to me that line thinking about reading his IMDb page and how like grandiose it was about him and then thinking about how he was in all these other films and then seeing that line it makes it almost seem like yeah, maybe the writers just really liked him or he was one of the writers and they were like, "Why well, got to have some kind of a heroic thing to do in here?" Here, I saved the girls in this one scene, off camera. No, 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 that's not good enough. I saved the girls and a bunch of other people that I found. It's literally the fact that they just had to come in here and go, and a bunch of other people, like, no, not heroic enough. Make him more important. I also saved these orphans from a burning uh, building. It is like that close. <laughs> it is like that close. Oh my god. Um, like I remember, like saying this uh, when we before uh, when we were done watching the movies. Like I said, like this movie has gigantic plot holes, and they just cover it up with a tiny band aid. Yes, exactly. <laughs> it's like it's almost like they are aware of the plot hole, <laughs> and they feel like at the last second they have to run there and fix it. Like I said, this reminds me of some of the things that, like I used to write back when I was in high school, and I didn't really know how to write, and I would just be like. Oh, shit. I forgot to talk about this thing. <laughs> yeah, I'll talk about it now. You know you can always go back and, like, re-edit and add that stuff. No, I'll just talk about it now. <laughs> like, that's how I used to write, and I'm like, oh, my God, I see it in this. <laughs> uh, yeah, never let anybody tell you that you can't make a movie, folks. Because uh, this got made, uh, and it's low with the stuff that, you know, high schoolers had problems with. Uh... But God, what else do I want to talk about here? Oh God, yes, okay. Now we're getting into total spoiler territory on this. Now we're getting into total spoiler territory on this. You want to talk about like the weirdest off-camera things. Reggie dies. Reggie flat out dies. He is stabbed by the tall man. There is no chance of him surviving. But the two brothers get away and then it just like fade cuts into the next scene and it's the little brother at a fireplace crying to Reggie and Reggie's like, come here. You can, yeah, let it all out, little guy. Yeah, come on. And he's like, why did he have to leave and then die? I knew he was going to leave me alone. Why did he have to die in that car accident? I was like, what? And yeah, apparently... Apparently this whole movie was just the little kid's imagination or I, like a dream I, or... Or, it, or Reggie was just okay 
and then it tur and then the brother died off screen. Again, we honestly do not know what this movie was. Because of how that ends, we were just sitting here going, so is this all a dream? And it was like the little kid trying to figure out a way to like deal with his brother's death or something? No, no, I don't think so. So, But like what? that would explain all the goddamn plot holes. Yes. <laughs> Yes, it would. Because, like you said, this is something a high schooler would write. But, but is that what it is, or is it that Reggie, even though he was stabbed and left for dead, and like they checked on him and he, he was dead, he somehow survived that off camera, but the brother who did survive didn't survive off camera. It is the most purple. Like it is, it's one of those things where it does not make any sense for this to be a dream sequence, especially considering the fact that the freaking tall man comes back around at the very end, so it's like, that wasn't even like some weird nightmare of his. Well, you know, every horror, every horror movie has to have the villain come back because they want to make but, sequels. But that then comes in here and goes, well, it can't have all been a dream because he exists. It's like, it was all a dream, or was it? It's kind of that bullshit, you know? No, it wasn't. <laughs> and we have the answer. He's there. Tall man is there at the end. <laughs> Uh, yeah, and it's just, it's so, oh my god, it's just so, oh, man. ah, okay, sorry. <laughs> like, we didn't even get to, like, the uh, portal or anything. We have not. <laughs> we didn't even get to, like, the weird, weird shit. <laughs> I'm just talking about the plot hole here, the, oh my god. <laughs> How do you have one character survive off screen and another character die off screen in the same instance? What the fuck? This is, this is madness to me. It's, it's been a while since a movie sent me like this, and this isn't even a new movie. And this is even my first time seeing this movie. Oh my god. <laughs> Are Sorry. we gonna have a uh, rage uh, title for this? If or? you wanna make a special <laughs> Halloween rage edition, go for it. Oh, uh, you start school in a few days. You don't, yeah. have, you don't have time for that. <laughs> Oh man, kudos to all the people out there who like it when I get mad at movies and just decided to click on this one and just roll the dice to see if it turned out that, that way. You guys won. Um, but no, there's, okay, so there comes a moment which they're exploring through, they're exploring through the funeral home and they find this one room which, man, God bless these guys for trying with what they had for these props because they wanted to make this look like a futuristic, like, alien space tunnel. So they just line it with barrels. Which, the barrels aren't meant to be, like, the wall or something. Like, they are legitimately barrels, but they aligned them in a way that made them look kind of weird and ominous. So, okay, they did, they did decent with what they had. But there's, like, these two little, you know when you go to the museum and they have that electric thing that you put your hand on, it's just like... Bzz, yeah. Bzz, it's like two of those things sticking up, and you put. There was supposed to be like a giant, like tuning. Fork. Oh my god, that comes out of fucking nowhere. <laughs> yeah, there's a moment in here in which Reggie and older brother sit down, and they just have a jam session, and it's just two guys sitting down playing song, and it's one of those things that again makes me go, someone on the staff knew Reggie in real life. Or Reggie actually had something to do with the making of this film. I should really have looked up to see if he was a director <laughs> or a writer or not before talking about this. But clearly they knew him. And they were like, yeah, we know this guy. He's in a band. Let's just let him come in here and jam with us for a little bit. And yeah, it's just them recording a jam session. And at the end, Reggie takes out a tuning fork. And he goes, what's that? Oh, it's a tuning fork. He doesn't really do anything with it. I mean, he hits like the fish. But like, yeah, he just like hits it just to show off. Yeah, tuning fork. We know what a tuning fork is. That's true. And it all kind of is supposed to lead up to, like, the big control panel inside this room yeah, is like, meant to be a tuning fork? Yeah, it's like, oh, I'll just put bo I'll just put my hands on both of these pillars because no one ever suspect to do that, like... And they do it, and then, like, the kid, like, walks through, and that's the whole, like, I must not have fear moment. And he walks through, and all of a sudden he's, like, floating around in, like, red space, and he looks around, and now there's, like, just a bunch of, like, the little hooded people walking in a line, and then they pull him <laughs> out of there. remind me of, like, the little hooded creatures from Star Wars. The Jawas? Yeah. yeah. Yes. Jawas, yes, that's that. Ooh, teeny. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's their origin story. Like <laughs> That's where they come from. That's where that weird metallic ball is. It's some crap that they just fell. No, that's one of the weirdest murder weapons in any <laughs> horror film ever. 
the tall man kills people with like these little, if you're a comic fan, they're Mr. Terrific's T-spheres, that's what they are. They're just little tiny balls that fly around, just little silver balls that fly around. And then like, they have like little like spikes that come out. Like claws, just like. Yeah, and like they go to your head with the claws, and then a drill comes out, starts drilling into you, and there's like, it just starts squirting blood out the other end, and it's like, it looks almost like something made to prepare food, like a slushy machine or something. <laughs> the like, slap chop, like. <laughs> No, 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 no. What it is, it looks like when you, like, shotgun a beer. Like, when you just, like, take a pin, stab it in the side of a beer. That's what this looks like it's doing to the human head. Uh, so, yeah, but... So, aside from the little silver balls just being one of the dumbest murder weapons ever, uh, little kid pokes his head through, looks in there, finds them, he gets pulled back, and then he goes... That's what they're doing with all the bodies in here. They're turning them into these little people. It's the gravity that makes them short. And I was like, what? That's not how gravity works. It's like, hold on. Like, and I'm still confused about that because that wasn't the exact line they said, but they did say they're short because of the gravity. And all I could think was like, so are you saying the gravity like crushes them and makes them shorter? Or are you saying that they have to like shrink them down before they send them back to this alien plant with higher gravity so their center of gravity is lower? Mm -hmm. I don't, I have no idea what the hell you're talking about. Uh, okay, we had to take a break there because I just, I, it's, <laughs> this film is too stupid. It's too stupid. And I, guys, I wanted to like this more because I used to like it. I used to actually like this thing. I used to be like, no, Tall Man is creepy. Like, I originally thought, like, the tall man was, like, resurrecting, like, the dead people to, like, become, like, his, like, minions and, like, become a cult to, like, open the portal to hell or something. But well, having... he just wrote a better film. Yeah, it's like, but then it's like, this is like some, but then it's not a portal they're to hell. They're aliens. It's, they're aliens. The aliens mean. Just... <laughs> <laughs> It's just, it's so weird, like, it's literally this entire film just feels like they were coming up with it as they went, like, I don't know if there even was a script. Okay. So, yeah, I, we just had, we had, uh, we had, we, 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 uh, uh, oh, my God. This film has turned our brains to mush. Oh, God, yeah, I just had the spike ball just come in, just, oh, my God. Yeah, this is insane how again I know this has fans because I used to be one of you <laughs> but no it doesn't hold up and if you like it because it's bad if you like it because it's camp great that is the exact way to enjoy this but aside from like one or two shots in here man this thing is it is not good as being like a straight horror film and the thing is it feels like it was supposed to be a straight horror film that just got lucky enough to fall ass backwards into being goofy and weird. <laughs> so now it can have cult status. Uh, yeah, I, who I'm not gonna score this thing. <laughs> but y'all know my feelings on this thing. Uh, man. Tall man, still creepy. I'll give him that. Tall like, man, still creepy. Like, you said, like, he's the reason why this movie Absolutely. has become, like, a cult classic. Which I'm... <sighs> I'm not 100% on this, but I heard some story from someone. I didn't look it up to see if it's accurate, but, like, it sounded accurate to me. That apparently, like, they didn't have this guy cast when they started making the film. And they just kind of, like, saw this guy around town. And they asked if he, want, he wanted to be in the movie. And this guy agreed, and he became, like, a cult icon. <laughs> And this guy, I mean, he went from not being an actor at all to essentially just making a very good living on the convention circuit. Just going from convention to convention, just charging people for autographs. It's like, hey, man, good on you. Good on you for that. Uh, it's kind of cool that that guy came from this. So, uh, yeah, that's all, that's all I got for this thing. Man. <laughs> I, am, I can feel the smoke coming out of my ears talking about this thing. So, uh, thank you guys very much for tuning in to day one of the B-Squad. Uh, I hope you guys enjoy the rest. <laughs> I can pretty much guarantee none of the other films are going to get this kind of reaction from me. But, but we haven't seen all the other films we're going to watch. So come back tomorrow for another not quite ready for primetime player in the world <laughs> of horror. 
Uh, bye, everybody, and happy Halloween. Can I remember to start doing that? Yep. <laughs>